today on the Dad the Best I Can show. I always say to Katie, you like when it's hard, I would just look at each other, why did we do this? It was so good. Yeah. It was so good. And we did this. And and I said, kid, like if you don't have kids, you're you're guaranteed life always to be at about a seven, right? Not too many highs, not too many lows. It's gonna be pretty good. But if you have kids, you're gonna hit 10. You're gonna get a lot of tens out of life. And yeah. you're also gonna get the twos. Hey now, welcome to the Dad the Best I Can show. I'm your host, Rob Roseman. I'm a father to three kids. I've got a six-year-old boy, four-year-old boy, one-year-old girl. Woo! Wears me out just thinking about it. We're here to talk to dads like you, hear your stories, your tips, your tricks to help get through the day. All right, let's get on with the show. Today on the show, we are back for part two with my friend Mark Bromley. Mark lives in Maui with his wife and three kids. He's got an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, a two-year-old. Mark's going to talk to us about screen time and why YouTube kids freaks him out. Mark's going to talk about one drug he thinks everyone should do in their lifetime. Definitely not what I expected Mark to say. And Mark's going to tell us why having kids is not easy, but why it's all worth it. Screen time. Mm -hmm. which you hear a lot about, but nobody mm -hmm. knows what the fuck to do about it. The worst thing is I feel like a hypocrite because I just walk around on mine all the time. So how am I supposed to, why should my kid right. listen to me if I'm telling him to put down Hot Wheels race off game on his iPad? Cause I'm scrolling Instagram or something. Totally. Yeah. No, I think it's, I, I, I think it's twofold. I mean, I, I was talking to Katie about it. Like when I get most annoyed with the kids is when I'm trying to do something on the phone <laughs> and they're taking me away from it, which is awful, which is awful, right? When if I'm just, if I just have the thing on the charger and it's just me with them and, you know, maybe there's things I want to do in the house, whether it's grab a bite to eat or watch something on the TV or, you know, go outside, but they're, they're demanding my time. It's not as frustrating for me. It's when I'm trying to jam in that work email or reply to a text or check a score or something like that. And, th and they're demanding my time. That's usually when I get most annoyed. And so first and foremost, to your point, setting the bad example, like, I feel like that's got to stop um, right. easier said than done, obviously. And then with them, I mean, we, the only thing we've done that I'm super proud of is we have mm -hmm. banned YouTube kids um, only because we've heard horror stories that there are creepy sites and creepy people out there who embed really inappropriate shit in like it starts off Peppa Pig or starts off Paw Patrol. And then at the three minute <laughs> mark turns into something that they shouldn't be watching. And I'm, you know, I mean, when they're on screen time, I usually pop back and check, you know, what they're watching, you know, a, a couple of times, but not nearly enough to catch if they're do up to no good. Yeah. So, those egg video. Um, I mean, yeah, there's yeah, so much trash as... out there and, you know, we consume a lot of it too, but yeah. There's a difference, I think. When we grew up, we had a TV show where we had Super Mario Brothers and we'd sit and play. And I right. mean, like Angie will say to me, we did right. this too. And I'm just, I can't quite articulate why it's different, but it just seems like it's on steroids yeah. and, and it's just, it's just designed totally to be is. so addictive, you know, I'm, and because I'm addicted too, right? So it's like, you don't want to see mm -hmm. that for your mm -hmm. kids. So I think, like you said, we're, we try, I was just talking to my friend about it. And he says when he puts the kids to bed, like if he has his phone, he's going to want to check it when it gets boring or, you know. So I've tried at least to like for 15 minutes, leave it downstairs. If it's on you, you're going to check it. So I think putting it yeah, in the charger yeah, totally. for a minute is probably we, a good step. K Katie and I Katie and I tried for the first time this year. It didn't go well, but uh, just the fact that we're, we've are we tried it twice and we'll, I think next year we'll probably be better with it. But, you know, at work, if I have goals, I knock them out of the park, right? Because the goals are tied to my bonus and goals are tied to the success of the resort. But it never put goals on paper at home, right? We, we, don't, we don't put relationship goals or family goals or household goals. We have things we want to do, but they're kind of out there floating around in the, in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the ethos and, and we don't do anything about it until we put it on paper. So this year we put things like I wanted to do once a quarter community service with the kids. I wanted to take them to Shabbat services once a month. I wanted to, I said to, you know, for Katie and me, we got to go on a date night once a month and once a quarter with another couple. Cause I just, I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I, I don't have time or bandwidth for socializing cause I do it all day at work, but she would love to do it. So we put these things on paper and the first quarter of the year, we were really good about doing it. Right. Um, uh, we put like, you know, certain things about maybe there was a, some personal goals about weight loss or diet or something like that. And it was just attached to the inside of the, 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 the cup cup cupboard in the, in the kitchen. So every time mm -hmm. you open it, you're kind of reminded of it, dude, it had such an impact. Unfortunately, then life got turned upside down with the move to Maui. So we kind of lost focus on it. Um, but the reason I'm going 
talking about this because the phone time was definitely on that goal list, right? And we were really, really good about it, right? We've got this incredible lanai on our house that overlooks the ocean and um, the island of lanai. We'll sit out there together at night. I mean, gorgeous, mm-hmm. watching the sunset, both of us on our phones, right? And and um, and so it, it when, it when we put it on paper and wrote it down, all of a sudden it became more real, more tangible, and more accountable. Um, and so I think what we'll do next year is also put some goals for the kids mm-hmm. stuff and not just. Yeah. Well, I don't us. even think I really thought so, about little, it until I had kids because, you know, you want to just yeah. be on your phone the whole time. You want right. to be better for and them. Like, I think it's got it, every year it gets a little more slippery with it. It gets a little more addictive. I see kids out at dinner that literally don't even look up and I'm like, I'm judging them and their parents. And I know they're doing the best they can, but I also know I'm like, I want to find a way to be a little better because I want my kids to be able to right. interact in the world one day. So, so like you said, I think right. you just right. get find those little ways to get better, and then you just go with it. You're not going to be, you can't be off your phone all the time or tell your kids not to be on it ever. Let's take a quick break from Mark to tell you about our dad tip of the week. Today's dad tip of the week is brought to you by Kickstart Reading. At kickstartreading.com, you can watch two-minute videos with your kids to teach them how to read. It really is that simple. Watch a video, knock it out, you're done. Go to kickstartreading.com and use the code DADTHEBEST to get your first month free. All right, this week's tip I use all the time. Somebody taught it to me, I forget who, but if you're not doing it, you should start doing it now. When you want your kids to do something, give them two choices, both of which you're happy with, A or B. We're at dinner, we're at dinner, your kid doesn't want to eat, you're going to eat six chicken nuggets or four chicken nuggets. Which one do you want to choose? Four. Okay, done. He's eating. I'm happy. You want to eat seven green beans or three green beans? Three. Bam. Kids eating vegetables. You want to watch Daniel Tiger or do you want to watch Arthur? Arthur? Perfect. Let's watch a show. Arthur, by the way, a great show on PBS. I highly recommend. Pretty much anything on PBS Kids, you're going to feel good about your kids watching. Make things simple for your kids. Make things simple for you. Win-win. Let's get on with the show. Let's hit you up with a few more fun entertainment questions for Mark, and then we'll let you go. Nice. All right. If you could okay. see one comedian, dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, probably Eddie Murphy. Alive, that would be good. In the jacket, he was the man. Yeah, yeah raw. He was actually, he, he stayed here with us a few uh, months ago. And at one point, he's just sitting on the pool deck with a hooded <laughs> sweatshirt on sunglasses oh yeah all right he's having a good time at least <laughs> i was gonna say he kind of went into a, a rabbit hole but that's that's probably that's probably you're probably around yeah. famous people like that a lot yeah hercules hercules, oh, hercules. Oh, that'll be my all right it leads me into a next question <laughs> when somebody asks you your favorite movie what do you say oh it's too hard hey mark man. what's your favorite that's movie so hard i mean i mean you gotta go genre you got i mean wolf of wall street is up there okay okay Let's end with a couple yeah. of fun ones. You're you're a big music fan. Yeah. You're you were Tom Hanks in Castaway, and you're stuck on an island for one year. What albums? I don't want to say albums because I don't really know albums. But what artists or rappers or whatever are you bringing with you? You can bring three with you. Funny enough, I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I've been asking other people this question, and I don't have it completely down pat. I'm going to go with Dr. Dre, The Chronic. I'm going to go with Nas Illmatic, and I'm going to go with, this is the wild card because I'm a huge Too Short fan. Too Short, Shorty nice. Pimp. God, your kids would be so <laughs> proud. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I remember my dad in high school, he took my car somewhere, and at the dinner table, comes back, happened to look in my Case oh, Logic. Yeah. Remember Case Logics? And, and, he, come, and, he, and he looks at me and goes, Mark, why do you really <laughs> think you're black? <laughs> Or I don't know if it's why do you yeah. think or why do you want to be, and then it then it then it then it evolved into this conversation of you know I don't even think I know you <laughs> when I look at these CDs that you have in your car. What was he listening like, to? Oh, That's God. what when you grew up in the '90s though. That was like especially a lot of like Jewish kids listening totally. to rap. It was a uh, it's huge for. I mean, we were from totally. Miami. We had real garbage totally. down there, but it was the best. You might have to throw Outcast, Southern Playalistic, Cadillac, Funky Music in my top three slash so four. Good. Just, and it, it was tough. It was tough not to put uh, Life After Death or All Eyes on Dual CD album yeah. by Biggie and Pac. Our boy, but, uh, uh, our boy Chris Heller, he's a biggie. He's a biggie number one. You know, I actually asked him that question, uh, and his was, uh, I think, uh, 
Raekwon only built for Cuban links, low end theory tribe. And I forget the second one, but it wasn't, Oh, it was Jay Z. Uh, I forget the album. Oh, he grew up. And I'm sure Heller will listen to this. And I, I tell dude, he's, he is the Brian Windhorse. Nobody knows who of, that is, by the way. Uh, of, of rap, right? Brian Windhorse only knows Cleveland Cavaliers <laughs> basketball. That's all he knows, right? I, on the other hand, is are the Stephen. Uh-oh. I'm the Stephen Smith, right? I'm I'm diverse. Wow. I got depth, right? I, I I told Chris this, and he ignored it. So now he can't. Mark, ignore you it. are the it's Stephen A. Mark. Smith. That's uh, <laughs> something to be known. It's better than Skip Bayless, I guess. But congrats. What totally. is one drug totally. you think everyone should do in their lifetime? One drug everybody should do. You're seventy oh, years old. Man. Your grandpa. You're like retired. You're just like. You want to live a little, right? What's something that you would you would say it's worth trying, or you can abstain? Maybe you've never done anything like this you know, in your life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I honestly, this is going to be a. It's, I can't even believe this is going to come out of my mouth, and you're going to fall out of your chair if you're sitting down. And it's not a drug, but like the meditation and that, like what that has, what I have found in the last year and a half what that does for you is really? better than any drug. And, and, what, and yeah, it's just, what insanity. are you doing? Are you doing TM or are you doing so, just mindfulness? I, I use, I, I use mindfulness. I use the call map. Uh, I've, I've, um, a couple other people have sent me stuff. I'm not, I am by no means, I am like still very beginner on this stuff. I, I haven't found the discipline to do it regularly. Uh, I do it right now as kind of like a, um, like emergency mm-hmm. triage, right. When I'm just, when, when life is just, when th- I'm feeling overwhelmed or things aren't going well, I journal Look at you. or I'll meditate. So what do you do? Like a little um, five minute yeah, or on your phone, put your earbuds in and listen. No, yeah, ten, 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 ten That's minutes hard. usually. Uh, and it's, it's in, yeah, but it's amazing. It just, it, it wipes the slate. And, you know, I've heard someone call uh, journaling windshield wipers to your soul. And so what do you do with so that? You're waking me. up and writing um, just throughout the day or what? Yeah. No, it's usually, usually when I, I can't do anything mellow at home. Right. <laughs> so, so it's usually when I get into the office right away, I'll close the door. I've got this little uh, essential oil diffuser in the in the office that's always going. And I'll just take 10 minutes to fill a page of, of you know, whatever's going on in my, my head. And it's unbelievable. That's awesome. I, so, like I, like uh, you, I've always tried yeah. them and I fall off the wagon, but I've got back. I use that Headspace app now yeah. and I'll just like, I can't even, 10 minutes is hard. Yeah. So I'll try to knock out three even. And it's just yeah. like, oh, that helped. You know, I right. did, I did a. Right, right. I did a it hot made, yoga class huge. this morning. That was something like, I mean, if you could have seen a video of this, you would have, it would have made your day. It's me. Yeah. It's me and like 10 <laughs> women awesome. and Lululemon pants, which shout out Lululemon. Is, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to hot yeah, yoga if there's 10 guys awesome. there. So, but yeah. I, I feel like an that's asshole awesome. for the first 30 minutes, but the last 30, it's that same thing. You're getting that, like that mindfulness effect where you're just sweating and it's like, I should do more of this. So yeah. Who would have thought that, you would ask me a question when we were in sophomore <laughs> year at 515 Walnut about what drug to do. And yeah. I would have said meditation. <laughs> I mean, I, I had, that was the eighth, and, eighth and on my he, list at least. The huge plug to, there's a book called Search Inside Yourself. If you haven't read it, read it. I don't read books. I yeah. probably read a book a year max. This, this book is everything for anyone, uh, especially someone who's trying to find or appreciate or figure out mindfulness and taking care of themselves because so often, you know, my whole life, I I work in the hotel business. I'm here serving guests and employees. And then I go home and I'm accommodating my wife and my kids. And how often am I, you know, taking care of myself, right? I mean, certainly I run and I I go to the gym, but this book is incredible and it's an easy read. It's written by the 107th employee from Google uh, who does this class for Google. Uh, And it's, it's, it uh, it wasn't. I wouldn't say it, it was life changing or career changing, but it certainly made sure that I could keep things on the rails a lot more mm-hmm. consistently. No, that's awesome. I See, I, I mean, I I fully buy. I read a lot yeah. of that stuff, and I buy in a hundred percent that meditate. All these things uh-huh. work. It's just the you just need to implement yeah. it, and make it a habit, and that's where I fall off sometimes. Yeah, well, this was you. fun. I want to ask you one closing question, since you are a dad of three kids, which anybody that can pull that off, I've got three yeah. now, and it's just insane. The two to three jump is like. Totally. underrated game changer i don't know why or how or nobody i got a, a good fun story my friend he's got three he's at a baseball game with another dad who's got three one of his kids little league games and they're just kind of sitting on the bleachers having a nice quiet moment staring off onto the field and my buddy looks at his other friend and a lot of these guys have two kids he says he says man 
Dave, you think we should tell these guys, like, stop it too. It's, you've got it good. Just be careful. And quit while you're ahead. My buddy Ike says, he just, his friend just stared off into space for like five seconds. And he said, fuck them. Nobody told us. <laughs> I was like, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. I always say to Katie, like, when it's, where it's hard, I would just look at each other. Why did we do this? It was so good. Yeah. It was so good. And we did this. And, and I said, kid, like, if you don't have kids, your your guaranteed life always to be at about a seven, right? Not too many highs, not too many lows. It's going to be pretty good. But if you have kids, you're going to hit 10. You're going to get a lot of 10s out of life. And yeah. you're also going to get the twos. And so that's 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 the big thing, right? Do you want to just be play it safe and be seven? Or do you want to, you know, experience those 10s but also have to deal that's, with that's the lows? Great. That's a great way to end it, too. If you're thinking you're not totally. getting twos, then you're just you're playing the wrong game. So expect those to happen. Yeah. Mark, appreciate yeah. it. This was fun. We'll do it again Anytime, soon. Anytime, my man. Thank you guys for listening to the Dad the Best I Can show. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and leave us a five-star rating on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Actually, five stars. We could do better than that. Brooks? Infinity stars, Cameron. How many stars? Infinity thousand. Infinity thousand. Got to one up them in this household. Thanks. See ya. Thanks again to our sponsor, Kickstart Reading. At Kickstart Reading, you can watch two-minute videos with your kid that teach them how to read. It really is that simple. I taught my kid how to read with these videos, and now you can too. Go to KickstartReading.com and use the code DadTheBest to get your first month free kickstartreading.com